The Last Summer Visitor August in the small town of Cedar Hollow was always sweltering. The heat seemed to cling to everything, turning the days into a sticky, oppressive haze. But for Natalie, this summer was different. It was her first time spending it alone in the old family cabin, nestled deep in the woods outside of town. Her parents had bought the cabin years ago, and after their sudden passing in a car accident last year, it had been left to her. Natalie wasn't scared of being alone. In fact, she welcomed the solitude. The past year had been a blur of grief and paperwork, and the cabin offered a peaceful retreat. The first few days were exactly what she had hoped for. Quiet mornings on the porch, afternoons spent swimming in the lake, and evenings reading by the fire. But as the month wore on, a strange feeling began to settle over the cabin. It started with small things. A creak of the floorboards when she was sure she was alone, the flickering of lights even when there was no wind, and the unsettling feeling of being watched. Natalie tried to ignore it, convincing herself that it was just her mind playing tricks on her. After all, she was alone in an old house in the middle of the woods. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, she decided to take a walk by the lake to clear her head. The air was thick with humidity, and the sky was tinged with a strange orange glow. As she walked, she noticed something unusual near the edge of the water, a set of footprints leading out of the lake and onto the shore. They were large and deep, as if made by someone heavy, yet there was no sign of anyone else around. Natalie's heart raced as she followed the prints, which led up the hill toward the cabin. They stopped abruptly at the porch, where the wood was scratched and gouged as if by sharp claws. She backed away, a cold sweat breaking out across her skin. The night was growing darker, and the forest around her seemed to close in. She quickly retreated inside, locking the door behind her. As she tried to calm herself, she heard the faint sound of footsteps on the porch. They were slow and deliberate, pacing back and forth. Natalie froze, her breath catching in her throat. She wanted to call for help, but there was no signal out here, and the nearest neighbor was miles away. The footsteps stopped, and for a moment there was silence. Then, a loud bang echoed through the cabin as something heavy slammed against the door. Natalie grabbed a kitchen knife and backed into the corner, her eyes fixed on the door as it shuddered with each impact. She could hear heavy breathing on the other side, low and guttural, like an animal. But this was no animal. Suddenly, the banging stopped. The only sound was the rapid pounding of her own heart. After what felt like an eternity, Natalie crept toward the window and peeked outside. There was nothing on the porch, just the darkness of the woods beyond. She didn't sleep that night, too terrified to close her eyes. When dawn finally broke, she decided it was time to leave the cabin. She packed her things in a rush, eager to escape the oppressive atmosphere that had settled over the place. But as she was loading her car, she noticed something on the ground near the porch, something that hadn't been there the night before. It was a large, tattered sack, covered in dirt and leaves. The sight of it filled her with dread, but she couldn't look away. With trembling hands, she approached the sack and slowly pulled it open. Inside was the decaying corpse of a man, his eyes wide open in a grotesque expression of terror. His clothes were shredded, his skin marred with deep gashes. Natalie staggered back, her stomach lurching. How had this body ended up here, and why hadn't she heard anything? Panicked, she ran back into the cabin to call the police. But when she returned outside, the sack and the body were gone. There was no sign of them, just the empty porch and the faint imprint of those strange deep footprints in the dirt. The police arrived later that day, but after a thorough search, they found no evidence of a body or anything unusual. They chalked it up to the stress and isolation getting to her, but Natalie knew what she had seen. She couldn't stay in the cabin any longer, not after that. She left Cedar Hollow that day, vowing never to return. But the horror didn't end there. 
A week later, she received a package in the mail with no return address. Inside was a small folded piece of paper, stained and wrinkled. It simply read, you're next. Natalie moved to a new city, changed her name, and tried to start over. But she could never shake the feeling that someone or something was watching her. Every August, as the heat and humidity returned, she would find deep, muddy footprints near her door, reminding her that the last summer visitor hadn't forgotten. Story number two. The August Visitor. Every August, the small town of Willow Creek sweltered under the oppressive heat, and the townsfolk settled into their usual routines, long days spent indoors avoiding the sun, and nights gathered on porches to catch the slightest breeze. But this August was different. Something was off. The air was thicker, the shadows longer, and an unsettling tension hung over the town. For Sarah Thompson, this August marked the first anniversary of her husband's mysterious disappearance. It had been a year since Daniel had left the house one evening, saying he'd be back soon, only to vanish without a trace. The police had searched for weeks, but found nothing, and eventually the town moved on. But Sarah couldn't let go. She felt in her bones that something terrible had happened. One sticky August evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the oppressive heat finally began to subside, Sarah was sitting on her porch, lost in thought. She stared at the thick woods that bordered her property, where Daniel had last been seen. The woods seemed darker than usual, more menacing, as if they were hiding secrets in their depths. Just as she was about to go inside, she noticed something unusual, a flicker of movement between the trees. At first, she thought it was a trick of the light, but then she saw it again, clearer this time. A figure was standing at the edge of the woods, just barely visible in the fading light. Her heart skipped a beat as she squinted, trying to make out the details. The figure was tall, broad-shouldered, and eerily familiar. Daniel? She whispered, her voice trembling. The figure didn't move. It just stood there, watching her. She felt a chill run down her spine despite the heat. Slowly, she stood up and took a few tentative steps toward the woods. Daniel, is that you? The figure began to move, but not toward her. Instead, it turned and walked deeper into the woods, disappearing into the shadows. Sarah's fear was replaced by a desperate hope. She couldn't explain it, but she knew she had to follow. Grabbing a flashlight from inside, she hurried toward the edge of the woods, her heart pounding. The forest was dense, the trees towering over her like silent sentinels. The further she ventured, the darker it became, until the only light was the narrow beam of her flashlight. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and decaying leaves. As she moved deeper into the woods, the silence pressed in around her broken only by the occasional snap of a twig underfoot. She followed the path she thought the figure had taken, her mind racing. Could it really be Daniel? Had he been lost in these woods for an entire year? The questions swirled in her mind, but there were no answers, only that gnawing sense of dread. After what felt like hours, Sarah came to a small clearing. In the center stood an old abandoned cabin, its windows shattered and its roof caved in. The sight of it sent a wave of fear through her, but she couldn't turn back now. She had to know. As she approached the cabin, the air grew colder and a strange metallic smell filled her nostrils. The door was slightly ajar, creaking as it swayed in the faint breeze. Sarah pushed it open with trembling hands, the flashlight beam cutting through the darkness inside. The cabin was empty, save for a few broken pieces of furniture and the remnants of a long dead fire in the hearth. But something wasn't right. The smell was stronger here, and it made her stomach turn. She stepped further inside, her heart hammering in her chest. And then she saw it, a dark stain on the floor, leading to a trapdoor partially hidden beneath a tattered rug. Her breath caught in her throat as she realized what it was. Blood. The stain was old, but unmistakable. With a shaking hand, she reached down and pulled the trapdoor open. 
The stench that wafted up from the darkness below was overwhelming, and she gagged, covering her mouth with her hand. Shining the flashlight down into the pit, she saw what she had dreaded most, a body decomposed beyond recognition, but still wearing the tattered remains of the clothes Daniel had worn the night he disappeared. Sarah staggered back, her mind reeling. How had his body ended up here, so close to home? Who could have done this? But before she could process the horror, she heard a sound behind her, the creak of a floorboard. She spun around, the flashlight trembling in her hand, and saw the figure standing in the doorway blocking her only escape. It wasn't Daniel. The figure stepped into the light, revealing a face twisted with malice, eyes gleaming with a sick satisfaction. Sarah's blood ran cold as she realized the truth. The person who had taken Daniel, who had kept her in suspense for a year, was someone she had known all along. The figure took a step forward, and Sarah finally found her voice. She screamed, but the sound was swallowed by the woods, leaving only silence in its wake. And as the door to the cabin swung shut, the August night grew still once more. The secret of the woods kept safe for another year.